10 years and younger and certain of when next his daily bread was going to come from and roaming the streets of Agona Nkwanta and New Amanfu. This young man never imagined that in the next few years he could be sitting close to some of the big names in Ghana's politics. Today we speak to a young man whose life of struggles and pain have catapulted him to this level in his life that he describes as only the grace of God. Come along with us as we speak to the CEO of Kiwi Gold Photography as he shares his story here on The Untold on Ghana Web TV. Samuel Oseyajiman was born to Peter Oseyajiman and Elizabeth Bonsu, all of blessed memory. He was the last of his mother's three children and number 20 of his father's 23 children. I was born in my village, Bekwai Abodom. It was during my um, grandmother's funeral, that's my mom's mother, funeral, when um, uh, my mom got into labor. Yeah, so. <laughs> According to stories, I came out very dark, so people started calling me Kwame Kweye, Kwame Kweye. But my mom got angry with it and started complaining, so they had to stop. And then we moved to um, Agunan Kwanta in the western region. Um, my, my dad owned um, a few filling stations there, then, in those days, at that time. So um, my mom and my stepmother were there with them. Um, my, my, dad, my dad died at a tender age. I was very young when he passed. So most of my upbringing was on my mom. Um, so I, was, I did uh, most of my basic education in the Agona Kwanta there. Yeah, so growing up, um, it became a little tough because just my mom, she didn't really go to school. so. Things were in that stable for her. While still in primary school, his mother fell sick and had to leave for Kumasi in search of more effective treatment. He was left in the care of his step siblings who were not ready to cater for him, while his two biological sisters, who could have, were also by then living with some relatives in Accra. <laughs> the treatment wasn't really good, so I go here more than I go to the other side. But my stepmom, and to comfort, she was really, really welcoming. So I was mostly there, but you know, stepmother, step siblings, sometimes it's, it, it doesn't really go well sometimes. Uh, so there is a, a, a teacher that I knew then. <coughs> He's now a, a Pentecost pastor. His name is Mr. Ofe So he took, it, he took me in, uh, in Agunan Kwanta, and I was staying with him. And for a while, he got transferred to New Amanfo in Takrade. And so he left me there. And the few months that he left me there was very difficult because um, I had to sometimes go to the market, help my stepmother sell some cooking utensils. Me fa kakra, no ma fa politim ba kakra bi apio water, then I'll be selling them in the market uh, on Wednesdays. That's the market day in that town. So um, he once, the teacher once came back to the town and then when he saw my standard of living, he got like very worried. He took me away to the new Amanfo, to the school that he was teaching. So I was staying with him. I stayed with him for a year and a half and he got transferred again. But where he was going to, he wasn't certain. So he left me behind in the school with one madame. The two years Samuel stayed with this madame was one of the worst periods of his young life as he had to endure very harsh treatments from her. She wasn't, um, I don't know how to put it, but it's like, so you're just forcing yourself to do it. And sometimes I could eat like kukunte, continuous for like two, two weeks like no break sometimes too there's no food so um the the town it was a um, it was a efficient town so sometimes i go to the seaside and get help them to 
pull out the canoe and those things at the end of the day you get some fish from some of them then I go and sell or sometimes I will go and I had some two friends together with me making food. We go and fetch some firewood, we go and give it to the um, the women and then they give us money. So that was how I was um, living like trying to live. Sometimes it get very worse. Uh, I quite remember there was a time she got angry with me and locked me out for like two days. So I had to go and stay in someone's farm and I was eating raw cassava. <laughs> I was eating raw cassava then for like two days. Then I went back and he gave me a little caning before he took me inside. By some dint of good fortune, Mr. Ofei and his sister connected and almost immediately afterwards, she came for him. A reunion that was full of emotions. I was with my friends when um, one uh, one guy from the house came looking for me that there's a lady in the house looking for me. Now I was surprised because who is coming to look for me in that town? So I, I said okay and I went. So upon getting closer, I noticed like the person out the person, the lady looked very familiar. But I was like, no, nah, nah, that's not the person. Then I went closer, I got a bit closer and I realized, yeah, it was my elder sister and I couldn't, I couldn't hold myself, like, because I've been in there, I've been with the woman for close to two years and I had, I had one trousers, one knicker, that was my school knicker. That is what I was wearing at home and I was taking it to school at the same time. And uh, yeah, I had um, <laughs> I had bathroom slippers. Yeah. So um, upon seeing my sister, I was like, I was extremely happy, and she couldn't hold her tears because the state that I was in and what I was wearing was like, like very awful, like very bad. So she couldn't, for like almost 30 minutes, she couldn't like, she kept crying. So some of the ladies in the house have to hold her. And it was quite surprising how the madam I was staying with turned out to be so nice like that moment. Like it was very, very surprising. But anyways, my sister just couldn't, she just asked me to pack. We just couldn't, she, I don't know, she was, angry and sad at the same time she was very very angry so yeah we left that place and then came to Accra. All was well with Samuel and his sister until he got into secondary school. His sister ran into some financial difficulties and sought help from an uncle to keep him in school but this uncle just wasn't ready to help. He said um, I should go and do electrician like my sister should take me to those electricians, like those people so that I learn how to do electrician. And my sister got angry. So when we go home, she called me and she told me even if she is left with only one cloth, she'll sell it and take me to school. Because we were like, <laughs> she was angry. So yeah, I got admission to Ebenezer Secondary School. Then, um, when I got done, I did visual arts. So I just wanted to pursue the arts that I was doing. So when I got done, I went to IPMC. But growing up, I had this thing for computers, machines, and yeah, I was a bit inquisitive. I'm always trying to see what's going on with that and that. So um, uh, my first year, that's um, GSS1, my sister got me a laptop like that early. So I started learning and searching stuff and all that. Then, um, fast forward, I finished um, senior high and then I started IPMC. Before he started schooling at IPMC, Samuel was arrested for taking a friend's laptop under very intriguing circumstances. Uh, a friend took my laptop and never returned it. So upon um, entering IPMC, my sister said, 
um, she's not going to get me any laptop. I should go for that one. And I said, oh, the person, I've been chasing the person for like close to a year now and he's not giving me any response. Someone told me it has been sold, but I trust that person very well. So I was like, oh. Then my sister said I have to get it. I called my friend several times. He wasn't picking my call. So one, uh, one morning, I went, I went to his house early in the morning. When I got there, he was sleeping. He had some friends around. They were already sleeping. So I entered the room and I packed his laptop and charger. And when I came out, nobody saw me. When I came out, I called his mom and I told the mother that the laptop issue, I've taken his son's own. So he should bring my own and come and collect his own. If it wasn't for me calling the mom, like no one would have known I came there. So, um, one, uh, was it a Thursday or Friday? I think it was um, a Friday to a Saturday. It was the 31st night. I, I, I went for, I went to church. The moment I go home, someone came knocking at the door and I went and there were police, uh, police people around that have stolen a laptop and five million. And this person I'm talking about stayed with me in our house for like two years. That my sister was feeding him and his elder brother. That he said I've taken his five million and the laptop. So we, when we got to the police station, lucky enough, the one in charge was a woman. So we explained everything to her and she, got, she also got angry. Like if that is the story, then my sister has to arrest my friend too. But that wasn't something I really liked. You know, this this uh, music video, everything has changed, even the way people see me and relate to me is different from as compared to, you know, when I started dancing, you know, people see me as like a star, you know, I get free food. <laughs> Working on the whole Beyoncé production and then comparing it to what we do here in Ghana, what would you say is the fastest shoot ever? I don't know what they want. But this whole encounter, has it affected your prices? Has your oh, yes. prices gone up? Yeah. <laughs> Two percentage? Thank you and about. <laughs> wow. Lloyd, will you say you are the best dancer in Ghana? Samuel's trials seemed to have no end. At IPMC, he shared a close relationship with one of his lecturers who worked with him on a number of contracts, such as helping him build a website for Qualiplast. But that was also short-lived as new troubles soon came knocking. Between 2008 to 2009, um, I did a website for Duraplast and then uh, Qualiplast, those two companies, yeah. And um, when I was almost done with um, Qualiplast, you know, uh, those people, they, they, the owners are not Ghanaians. So at the end of like getting to the year, they go to their country and all that. Getting to the end of that year, I was, I was coming from their office because I left there very late. We had to finish with everything we were doing. And I was coming back from, um, uh, how they call it, industrial area, that's where their office is to Kwabena around 12, 1 a.m. And then I had an accident on the road and I couldn't recover anything because my sta uh, laptop was taken. So everything I had been working on like was gone. So um, I, I, I lost that the everything I was doing for them. So that contract got canceled. 
So I came back to square one. After school, he worked at the Ghana Standards Authority until he gained admission to the Radford University in Accra. Samuel's journey to becoming a professional photographer began when he joined a volunteer group. Upon entering uh, Radford University, I had made some friends already with um, Akibot and Ikea Boatima. And we had a crew that um, we sometimes go out to visit the orphanage and give them stuff. Sometimes we paint their uh, buildings for them and all that. And then there were artistic persons in that group. Like I met a whole lot of guys. That's where I met um, Josephine Kuire. Um, uh, she's the owner of Mambo Photography. She actually um, introduced me to photography, like to be like in awe. She, she gave me my, my first camera, first camera that I held, and then first MacBook that I used. Yeah, she gave it to me. So when I was entering um, university, I had a little knowledge about um, photography, but it wasn't really my thing. I had not concluded on it yet. So through school time, I was taking some pictures here and there. And then um, I met, I, I had a wedding. My first wed uh, engagement, yeah, wedding, engagement and wedding I did was for a friend. And after that, I had another one at Pram Pram. It was a Muslim wedding. So I met a lady, the makeup artist. Her name is Hamida. And on Instagram, she's um, she's and brushes. Yeah. So I met uh, she's and brushes. And we, she lost some files. And then as I was telling you, I had I liked computer stuff. So she told me she has lost some files on her memory card. She has tried. No one was able to recover. And I said, Oh, I can do it. So after the engagement, she came to see me one day. And then I was able to recover all those pictures for her. And she was like, oh, that's nice. She, she would introduce me to some photographers she knows who are really good. And she thinks she, they can help me with my craft. I said, oh, okay, cool. Me, I'm open to, I'm open to learn any day. So, so fast forward, one day I was there and she called me that, do I know a photographer called Sauce? And I said, no. I said, oh, I should check on him. He's really good. And, uh, he want, she wants to introduce me to him. And I said, oh, okay. So I, I went to check and I realized, yeah, the guy is really good. Like, he, he's extremely good. So one day, she called me that Source 2 has lost some files on the memory card. So she's giving my number to him to call me. And then he called me. When he called me, I was at church. So he came, he came it was a Friday evening. She came over to church and then handed me the memory card. And he said, oh, he really needs it because he has taken it to Legon and some other places and he's not getting it. So if I can do it for him, uh, he would be very happy. And he asked me when, I said, oh, the following day. And he was like, really? And I said, oh, yeah. And he said, okay, he's traveling to Takwa. So when he returns on Monday, we will talk more. So that evening when I go home, I started doing it, then within an hour I was done. I called him that, oh, I retrieved the picture, so. And he was like, no, you're lying. And I said, oh, it's true. Then he said, okay, I should send him a screenshot or something on WhatsApp. So I did a video of, and I sent it to him. And then he called me, like, he was happy, he was giving me fans and all that. that oh, when I when he comes here, yeah, Charlie, we'll link up, we'll link up. That mm -hmm. was around, I think, um, 20, 2015, 2016, then. yeah. <clears throat> He said, oh, we'll link up. And I said, oh, okay, cool. So he actually, when he came, he called me. And then we, we linked up. Yo, we linked up. But meanwhile, too, I was still, like, with my um, lady boss, Josephine. Because he, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't do more of a wedding. She's a conceptual photographer. She does more of concepts and all that. Then once in a while, some weddings on passes through. But um, she, she guided me throughout everything before I met Source. So when I met Source, um, I think the, the next time I met him, it was at a wedding. And then he, he handed me his camera. That's the first time I held a um, Canon because uh, I was shooting a Nikon. 
So that was the first time I held Nikon. And he he made me shoot some few pictures. And he looked at them and was like, oh, you, you, you can you can you can do or if I show you some other stuff. And I said, oh, me I'm cool. So I started roaming with him. Sometimes, um, immediately after my class, he'll be out waiting for me. Then we go. Um, then sometimes we go and sit at the um, Accra Mall and edit like almost the whole day. Sometimes the airport shell just be there and editing and then she'll be showing me some things. I go with him for his shoot. So it was basically just the two of us. He recounts his joy on getting his first professional camera. As I was about to get down with school and then one day, uh, early in the morning, my sister called me to come to her room. So I went to her room and then she gave me um, she gave me I think four thousand five for Ghana cities. And I was like, I said uh, the camera. I should go and get myself a camera. I don't know how to explain my joy that morning, like. I even really wanted to carry her because I was happy like me get my own camera. Wow. So Charlie, I just I didn't even wait for the like to get to morning crowd. Just that early morning uh, I went to a crowd to be. I went to get my camera. Uh, I got myself a camera. Ha so uh then I came home. I was, in fact, I was shooting everything I would see. Just from leaving the, leaving Accra to my house, I was shooting anything I would see, I would just shoot. Anything I would see, I would shoot. Anything I would see, I would shoot. Okay, so the first camera I ever used is a Nikon 5300. I, I felt in love, I, I felt in love with this camera because I was initially using a 5100, D5100 which was given to me by my boss. So I felt like when I was ready, when my sister gave me money to get the camera, this was what I was going to get. Uh, it saved me, like I did a whole lot of works with this, with this camera. Just that it's a crop sensor, you know, and as you go on, there are some um, um, the quality that you'll be looking out for. So that's when I, I went in for the, Mac D, uh, uh, Mac Mac Four, Canon, Five D Mac Four, yeah. But this is my first, the first camera I ever bought. It had um, this eighteen to one forty on it, and then uh, as time went on, I was able to afford myself a fifty mm. Fifty mm can do anything, everything you want to do. Fifty mm can do it. So I had my wide lens, and then my fifty. It's good to go. Yeah, so I did a lot of work with this. Yeah. Then um, a time came, I felt like I had to change over because of the quality I needed, the kind of people I was meeting. I had to match the quality that they needed. So, and since this was um, a, a, crop, a crop sensor, there were some particular um, events that especially night works night evening evening shoot um, if the light at the area is not helpful you might end up getting noise in the picture so then i had to save and get me a full frame which i did i got the Canon mark 4 yeah and i've been using that since while you are still at source photography samuel almost quit photography after a few challenges but the encouragements from his boss and colleagues kept him in the trade. As we continued shoot, as time went on and I was shooting with him, mostly we'll go together. So there was this wedding, he said, I have to go alone because he was traveling. I said, okay. We had an argument over that wedding because I said, no, I won't go alone. He said, no, I have to because at a point I have to start shooting. I said, no, me, I won't go alone. I'll never go alone. Then he said, okay, one guy should go with me. I said, even that one still, because 
I don't know what I'm going to do. I need you to be around because I, I, I don't know. I'll be confused. I'm, I'm going up. I, I used to be very timid. So I said, no, I'll be very con I wouldn't know where to start from. He said, I've shot with him for a while and I'm okay. Because at, at times when we, when we get to the program, he would just be editing. And then I didn't, I, I, conscious, I didn't know like it was part of the learning process. We'd be like, oh, start. Before I realized I'm done shooting the whole program. So like, it was like, oh, you can do it. You can, we went back, like almost a week, we went back and forth and I said, okay. So I went to do the shoot. And so we have some photographers, we have something we call JPEG and then RAW. So the RAW pictures are, it comes as in the raw nature of the picture, which you can adjust the highlights, the colors. It's a, it's a big file, so you can do anything you want to do with a picture in its raw state. But the moment it becomes JPEG, it becomes compressed, so you can't do much to it. But with the raw, you can do a lot to it. And can you believe I shot the whole program in JPEG? Meaning like, you can't do much editing on it. And I was so, I, I didn't know, I was feeling so bad. That being my first day, and then I go and I shoot the whole program in JPEG. I was very sad. Then when I came, he actually laughed. He laughed at me. He edited the whole pictures, but as he was editing, small, small, then he turned and he looked at me. And I, I knew he was insulting me in his head because editing JPEG pictures, like, comes with a lot of work. So fast forward, I shot another, another wedding again, which the files got stolen. In fact, I, I got attacked the evening after the program. Everything was taken, so I lost someone's wedding. For like a week to two weeks, I couldn't eat. Like, I was so, that night, that very night, I was up till the following morning. I didn't know what, to, I didn't go to the, for like, for like a week, I had not stepped in the office and he kept calling me to come. And I said, no, I'm done with photography. I won't do it again. Because imagine, imagine taking someone, shooting someone's wedding, whole ceremony, and then the whole file is gone. I said, no, I'm done. So it took some other photographers to call that, oh, Sometimes it happens. You just have to make sure it does And then this one is not my fault. And that's what they used in convincing me. And then I had to accept it. Like, so I went back to the office. Yeah, almost sorry, make a craft for a while. Because I, I wasn't eating. I was really sad. And then, yeah. Um, it became one of those stepping stones. You see, when something really happens to you, very, like, difficult you go through some difficult times and you are able to come like through it like you pick some you learn some things out so um, yeah I think I learned some thing from there uh, so nowadays the moment we finish now I, I back up my picture somewhere you know and if you meet me somewhere and you take I know I have a backup somewhere this story gets even better we're yet to hear even more from Samuel Osei Ajiman the CEO of Kiwi Gold Photography about his great breakthrough in life. We hope that you join us again on The Untold next week right here on Ghana Web TV. Remember to visit us on www.ghanaweb.com for even more news. Until next week, my name is Eche Atisu.